Good morning. Good morning. Now you can see me. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to Heritage Church. My name is Michael. This is Pastor Suzanne. We're the pastors here at Heritage Church. We're glad you're here this morning. If you don't mind, pull out the announcement sheet you were handed at the door. There's a thing called the connection card on there, and that tears off. So we're going to tear it off on three. One, two, three. Go ahead. Ooh. Wow. Everybody's just that staring. Little... Go ahead. Pull it off. Come on. We can do second this. service. We move a little slower. We're just, yeah, service. yeah. You're just not caught up yet. That's okay. Put your last name, put your first name and your family members that are here today. Any information you're comfortable sharing, we don't misuse it. We just send you information about the church. You want off the list, just say stop and we'll take you off the list. It's fine. But you're going to take this and put it in the offering bucket on the way out the door. We do need that information though, because you won't know what's going on unless it gets sent to you. If you're our guest in our online service, we welcome you this morning. It's glad to have you join us online from wherever you are. You can feel free to send us a PM, a personal message on Facebook, and we would love to connect with you as well. If you're our guest here this morning, we welcome you. We know that you have many choices and places to worship, so it's a gift to have you here with us. We would love to send you a sweet treat from us to you. Make sure you fill out the connection card that Michael talked about. And if after sitting through our service, Heritage isn't the church for you, let us know there so many great churches in our community and our heart's desires that you would be at a place mm -hmm. where you could learn more about your relationship with God and grow in your relationship with others. We do have a couple announcements to lift up. Each and every month we do one thing that we all work together to serve our community. And this month we are collecting gas cards for Madison City Schools. Believe it or not, there are a number of children who are homeless and their parents need yep. to get them to uh, school and so we can help be a part of that. There's a box outside you can put cash in and we'll purchase gas cards, give them to the social workers, or you can get a gas card yourself, yes. whichever you would prefer. Also want to let you know that graduation Sunday is coming up in May. And when we have our graduation Sunday, we don't just celebrate senior highs graduating. We celebrate if you're graduating from kindergarten, if you're graduating from fifth grade, eighth grade, if you're a senior in high school, if you're graduating from college, we just want to have a huge graduation ce celebration. Getting a graduate and degree. That's right. That's we always have some of those on there as well. And so we just need a photo from you. So you can email the office or put your name on the card. And we will uh, send you an email to get a photo to put you in that. And then this morning, our serving opportunity is our prayer team. Nothing we do happens without people praying. And so we invite you to be a part of our prayer team. And you can just put that on the back of your connection card as well. So this morning, we are continuing our message series, Liar, Liar. And we, we kind of came up with that title from that old saying we were kids, was a liar, liar, pants on fire, right? And so last week, we talked about the concept of lying versus the truth. And we spent a little time talking about that. But last week, we told you that as we go through this series, we're going to be talking about the lies that we tell ourselves the lies that, that we tell others, and the lies that even the church says to the world around us. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, I think some of the worst lies in this world of lies that we swim in, some of the worst lies are the lies that we tell ourselves. And there's a lot of reasons why we do it. It's kind of normal behavior. For some of us, it's kind of a coping mechanism in our lives. I mean, it helps us make sense of the world, but the problem is, is that, that it, it's, it just causes deceit in our lives. We're kind of deceiving ourselves. Like, for example, you are not the best person to ask your opinion of who you are. Does that make sense? Probably not. Maybe ask some people in your life, don't you know, you're not the best person to define who you are. Maybe the people who are around you and maybe our God. And when we tell ourselves lies, we kind of hold ourselves back from what God would have us to be. We sabotage our best efforts at living the life God intends for us, and I think we forget who we are. So I think we should start this morning with a powerful piece of scripture, one we're pretty familiar with if we've been around church any time. But if you haven't, this is going to be exciting news for you. It comes from Psalm 139. It says this. It's talking about God. For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Do you believe that? Do you believe that you are fearfully and wonderfully made? Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. Do you get that? Did God make you? Yes. And that means you are wonderful. You know, but the biggest lie we tell ourselves is this one. I'm not enough. 
Anybody in here willing to admit that you tell that lie to yourself a lot? I'm, I'm, just, I'm just not enough. We live in a world where we're made to feel that we are not enough. And you know why we're made to feel like we're not enough? Because we know how we can feel enough if we buy whatever product somebody's saying, selling. Can I get an amen? That's how we can feel enough. We get the right car. We get the right house. We get the right clothes. Retail therapy. Yes, but at its core, this is, this is I'm not enough. And it, maybe it kind of gets going in us in middle school. You know, in middle school, you know, you kind of start noticing everybody all around you. You know, you feel like you can never be popular enough. You can never be pretty or handsome enough. You're never smart enough. And then it just kind of, it kind of takes on a life of its own. It's like pour gas on it. And we go through our lives and we feel like we're unaccepted. We're unlovable. We're unwanted. I know people who in their lives have told themselves that so much that they look for people to not accept them. <laughs> they look for people to not love them. They look for people who are trying to make them feel unwanted. You see, this lie, this lie that, you know, uh, that I'm not enough, that lie is a lie. It has a lot of assumptions in it. And it starts with this assumption. There's something wrong with me. But God said you were wonderful. But when we say we're not enough, there's something wrong with me. We're unworthy. And when we tell ourselves this lie that I'm not enough, it accentuates our flaws. Every, every mistake we make defines us. That's what we think. And then we have to take this lie that, that we tell ourselves that I'm not enough. And, and lots of us raised our hands on that, that we've told ourselves that. Some of us fight this every day of our life and have been fighting it for years. But then we take that lie and we bring it into our relationship with God. You say we think to ourselves, God, God is going to love me. You have no idea. Come on, Suzanne. I'm broken. I'm fake. I'm a poser. God knows all the things that I've done. You know what that scripture said? That scripture said that God has always loved you. From the moment you were in your mother's womb, here's the deal. You were born enough. And the reason you were born enough is because God says you are enough. You see, that's what God does in our lives. God's answered all the lies of the world are this. They're met with the love, with the ever-increasing, always-present love of God. And today, our hope for you is that the lies that we share today will have an impact on how you live your lives because we want you to live into God's potential. And the only way that's going to happen is if you can overcome the lies that you tell yourselves. Whew, that's a pretty tough lie right there. But there's ones that, that, I mean, there's some that are just distinctly American, I think. And that's this next one. It's that when X happens, I'll be happy. <laughs> I think we do this to ourselves all the time. We think that, you know, uh, and, and it can play out in a couple different ways. The first way is just that you're just waiting for the stars to align, right? You know, before you feel satisfied with life, that somehow you, you know, if I could just win the lottery, I'd be happy, right? Has any of you ever said that and not bought a ticket? <laughs> if I just find my dream job, but I haven't put in an application, right? You know, I'd be happy. If I find my soulmate, but I refuse to date online. You know, if I could just do all this, I could be completely happy. And, and, but we act like sometimes it's completely out of our control. Worse, we think it's just completely up to God to make it happen, right? And we'll pray for it. We'll be on our knees praying for it. And when it doesn't happen, it must mean something, right? Because that person over there has got it and they're happy, right? Or at least they're showing you on their social media feed that they're happy, Right? And, and so does God love them more because he's not answering my prayer for the thing that's going to make me happy? It's going to make me happy. And then you get all defeatist about it, like, you know, I guess I just don't deserve happiness. Do you think God wants that for you, for your life? Or, or it plays out this way. You kill yourself for this goal, this imaginary goal that when you get there, by God, I'm going to be happy, Right? Can anybody say retirement? Another distinctly American thing. How many people ever got to retirement and said, Woof, who are you? <laughs> this ain't what it's cracked up to be. I'm kind of bored. <laughs> There's people in first service like, I'm retired and I'm happy. <laughs> But, you know, you kill yourself for a goal, and then you lead a miserable life going up to that goal. And then when you're retired, you find out you don't like your spouse. 
You don't like your home. You don't have any friends anymore because you gave them up because you gave up work, right? You, you know, retirement ain't all it's cracked up to be. And, and what happens that is, is that we retire and sometimes we retire from God. Mm. Do you think God stopped being in control of the universe just because you retired? I mean, Jesus said it this way. He said this to help us on our way to these goals that we can have. You can have goals, all right? He says, what I'm trying, and this is, I'm doing it in the message version because this like helps us a little bit. Sometimes see it a different way because we've heard the other version. If you've been in church any while, you've heard the other version. He says this, what I'm trying to do here is to get you to relax, to not be so preoccupied with getting so you can respond to God's giving. People who don't know God and the way he works fuss over all these things that you're fussing about, but you know both God and how he works. Steep your life in God reality, God initiative, God provisions. Don't worry about missing out. The other version would say, put first the kingdom of heaven and all other things will be given to you. I think in our, our idea of what happiness is or the ideas we've been sold, we forget that the kingdom, of happen, uh, the kingdom of heaven isn't just about happiness, it's about pervading joy. And we give that up. We give that up on our race to go get something we think is going to make us happy. We give up the joy that we could have. I'm not saying throw caution to the wind. You can still have a plan for when you can't work anymore. You can still prepare for the future so you're not a burden on everybody else. But put the kingdom of heaven first. You don't retire from God. That's where your joy is going to be. If we're going to reach God's potential... We have to overcome these lies that we tell ourselves. Now, another lie that we tell, and it impacts a lot of other people, is that sometimes people are trying to help us be all we can be in the kingdom of God. Or maybe somebody close to you is telling you something that you might want to be able to work on as a human being. And we tell this lie, um, I'm just the way I am. You ever had somebody tell that to you? Like you're talking to them, oh, it's just the way I am. Really? You know, that lie, that's a lie of false comfort. It's a lie of just security. I mean, there's no need to change. There's no need to take a risk. It's almost like you're telling the rest of the world that, well, I'm at my capacity. And in many ways, it's about control. You see, we say, I'm just the way I am. That way we can't get hurt. Or maybe we won't be judged. Maybe we won't feel that way. And all these things, this I'm just the way I am, it leads to this I'm fine lie. Like we like to tell ourselves that we're fine. Do you ever do that? You know what the word fine is, right? It's the four-letter feeling word, right? I'm fine. Mm -hmm. Husbands, when your wife says she's fine, is she fine? No. No, no, probably not. No. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a feeling word. And, and we avoid, because we don't want to talk about our feelings. A lot of times we just don't want to go there. Um, we say everything's fine, and we never admit the fact that we're insecure. We could be out of control. You know, everything, we feel kind of lonely. We feel weak, whatever it may be. But I'm just the way I am. You know that statement, just the way I am, it covers a lot of fear. There's just a lot of fear maybe sometimes in being who we are. But God is so good to us. God gives us the antidote for the fear in being our best authentic self. We get this beautiful piece of scripture from 1 John where it says this. There is no fear in love. Mm. If you live a life out of the love God has for you, you don't have to live a life of fear. But perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment. And whoever fears has not been perfected in love. <laughs> Now, a lot of times in churches, when we think of being perfect, we think about being behavior modification. You don't do this, 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 and this, and then you're perfect, right? But what God doesn't, God doesn't want you to be perfect. God knew you were going to sin. That's why Jesus came. You know what God wants you to do? God wants you to be perfected in love. Can you love more today than you loved last week or last year or last five years? That's the kind of perfection God is looking for in all of us. And I'm not sure we find it in the lie, I'm just the way I am. You see, a lot of us, we're just scared. We don't want to admit it. Mm -hmm. But we're scared that somebody might hurt us. We're scared of losing what we have. We're scared of weakness. We're scared of vulnerability. And what we do is we put a lot of labels on ourselves. Do y'all ever put any labels on <laughs> yourselves? Are there things that you tell yourself? I mean, we all do it from, from time to time with labels. 
And, and when we do this, you know, we, we plaster ourselves with these things. I mean, I, I have some common labels, and I've been known to do this. I mean, we tell ourselves we're ugly. Anybody ever done that one? We tell ourselves we're stupid. Anyone ever done that one? We tell ourselves we're worthless. All right, that's a good one. Anybody call yourself a freak? Anybody ever call yourself a freak? Or you're useless? How about this one? I'll put this one around my belly. Tell ourselves that we're fat, right? We do that. We call ourselves losers, right? We say that we're boring, that we're weird. Anybody do these? Anybody do any of these labels besides me? You feel like a failure, anybody? We just put all these labels on ourselves, and you know what? We walk around every day with these labels on ourselves. Now, if I were to walk up to you every Sunday with all these labels, and I felt all these things, and I walked in with this, you know what most of you would say? Suzanne, take those off. And guess what God says to each of you? Take them off. You're not ugly. You're not a loser. You're not useless. You're not worthless. You're not any of these things. You see, God gets to define who you are. Because when we put these labels on, you know what we're doing? We're declaring that we're not good. And what did God say when he created us? He said that we were good. God always says that we are good, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And these labels, they hold us back from the opportunities where we could learn and grow into the potential that God wants us to have. Now, I can assure you, I know a lot of other people. And I know what we do when we put these labels on. You know what we do? We think these labels are unique to us. And we think that everybody else has it all figured out. Do y'all ever do that? Like everybody else, <laughs> man, they are killing it. Look at their life. They're doing something. They have it all together. I assure you, I know lots of people. Guess what? We're all trying to figure it out. We're all doing the best that we can do. One time I had my uh, Siri, my phone, on my phone, and uh, I was getting frustrated with Siri. Anybody ever get frustrated with your Siri? And she's probably heard me say more choice words than anything, you know. But anyway, I say, you know, hey, hey, Siri, hey, Siri, hey, Siri. I said, Siri, and I had a tone. Do you ever have a tone with Siri? And I had a tone. You know what Siri said to me? Siri said, I'm just doing my best, Suzanne. <laughs> and you know what? Guess what? So are most of us. We're all just doing our best. And this problem, this social media world that we live in, and we get to see everybody's highlight reel, okay? It's not a highlight. I have literally had people with us who are broken, and then they go out and take a picture in front of a flower and say, what a great date mm. night we had, right? I mean, it's not, it's not real, okay? Know that. It's not real. There's always more underneath the surface. And don't put out a false impression, because you know what? It's discouraging to the rest of us that are just trying to figure it out, right? And, and think about it. There's no win in comparison. You're never going to win. That's not where you're going to find your potential. You know, comparison is the enemy of you figuring out your potential. Because there's always going to be somebody more popular. There's always going to be somebody more, more pretty, more handsome. There's always going to be somebody uh, who has more money than you have. There's always, always going to be. But you know what? You got Jesus. You got Jesus. We all got Jesus. How good is that? Now, Michael and I were pretty fortunate Every now and then we meet people of stature. You ever met somebody kind of famous? And every now and then we get to meet, you know, somebody we have a preacher crush on or whatever, or some worship leader somewhere, or, you know, whatever, or some author, some book. Although I would never wait in line for a signature, but that's for another sermon. But anyway, <laughs> so we get to meet those people, and you spend a little time with them, you go to dinner with them, you know, whatever, you do the thing. And Michael will get in the car and I'll go, man, they're just as messed up as we are. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> it is. It's great. Isn't it? But isn't it authentic? And isn't it comforting? And isn't it just so human? Why can't we just all admit that we're all just doing our best? And that we're all flawed. And we're all imperfect. But it's God's love that's perfect in each and every one of us. We don't have to be just the way we are. We have to be just the way Jesus is. You see, if you want to reach God's potential, we have to overcome the lies we tell ourselves. Exactly. That was an amen. That was a baby amen back there. <laughs> <laughs> Fearfully and wonderfully made. <laughs> hey, you know, I, it's been said before that, like, you know, if, if you want to make God laugh, tell him what your plans are, right? <laughs> if you want to make him cry, tell him you're in control. Because <laughs> that's the last lie we have is that I can control everything. 
And it's, it's comforting, don't get me wrong, because, you know, you get this false sense of security, like she was saying. No one can touch me anymore if I'm in control. No one can take away things from me if I'm in control. <laughs> That's wrong. No one can hurt me again if I'm completely in control of everything, right? Just wrong, wrong, wrong. And I think God weeps over that attitude. Mm. If I'm perfect everything's going to be okay, right? And if I have to be perfect, everybody around me has to be perfect too. And when they aren't, (laughs) when they aren't, I have to grasp control. Because if I want it done right, I have to do it myself, right? It's such, such a devious lie that you can be in control. That it's all on you. (laughs) And, And when it goes sideways... Kind of tailspin does it. How many, how many control freaks we got out here? Yeah, you all very in control of yourself. And you're like, I'm raising my hand because I want to. Right? <laughs> I get you. I'm recovering. I'm recovering, right? Recovery, yeah. Control freaks. I mean, we, and, and then the rest of you are like, I'm not raising my hand. I don't have to do that. <laughs> it's so isolating. And it is so unrealistic to think that you're in control of everything. And when it goes sideways, you don't want to hear it, right? And you go into a tailspin emotionally. You lash out at the people that are trying to help you, the people that are there for you, the people that love you the most. You lash out at them and hurt them because things are going sideways for you, right? You flail emotionally, if not physically. And if I don't, (laughs) you know, and you think... If I don't confess what's really wrong, I never have to get to the root cause of why I'm a control freak. What I'm really feeling, what's really happening on the inside, then I can go on pretending and acting all normal. And I don't have to feel weak. I don't have to feel insecure. I don't have to feel out of control. What are we going to admit the real problem here? You know, a lot of us that have been religious or been around the church any amount of time. We look at the idea of sin as uh, when we hurt other people, we hurt ourselves, we offend God. And I'm not saying all those aren't, you know, a way to look at sin. But what are we going to look at sin like the Bible looks at sin? It does look these other ways too. What are we going to look behind the sin? What are we going to open up the curtain and see it. You know, James, Jesus' little brother, and even Jesus said this, this way. He said this. He says, therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other that you may be what? Healed. When are we going to equate sin to its root cause, which is brokenness? When are we going to seek healing for our brokenness? When are we even going to admit that we're broken? If we're in control of everything, we need to start to admit, we need to get comfortable with this, that behind every control freak is an insecure little boy or an insecure little girl. And we're scared of our weakness, of our vulnerability. We're scared of losing everything sometimes again and again. We're scared of being hurt. And instead of seeking healing, we've sought this illusion of control. And it is an illusion. At what cost? To you, to everyone around you. At what cost? If we're going to reach God's potential for our lives, we have to overcome these lies we're telling ourselves. This is such an important topic. And one we don't really think about a lot. But we all tell ourselves lies. You ever burn out a three or four year old? (laughs) When you ask a three or four year old, you know, what they look like, they think they are beautiful and they will tell you and they would know, you know, nobody, or if they're a little boy, they think, they really think they're superheroes and they can, you know, they can, they're here, you know, uh, you know, we have a little one in our life. He'll say, I'm here to save the day. Well, good for you, young man. Good for you. Right. But something happens along the way in our lives and it's sin that entered the world with the first lie that Satan told. 
and it just continues to manifest itself in the world around us. So we tell ourselves lies. Next week, we're going to talk about maybe one of the reasons we tell our li some lies to ourselves is that others have told some lies to us as well. So we're going to talk about that a little bit next week. You don't want to miss that. We invite you to be here for that. And each and every week at Heritage, we have next steps. These are steps that we take to grow in our faith because we believe that followers of Jesus Christ should grow. That we are always being perfected, not by our behavior, we're always being perfected in love. And so the first one is this, I'll write a letter refuting the lies I tell myself. I bet you some of you on these labels, I bet you tell yourself some of those things. What would it be like just to get out a piece of paper and write all the lies that you tell wow. yourselves? It could be a really powerful exercise. And I don't care how old you are. I don't care if you're in middle school or high school, a grown adult, or you're older, whatever. Write down the lies that you tell yourself. And then you know what? You want to take it a little bit further? Go find out what God has to say about you. A God who says you're fearfully and wonderfully made. A God who wants to be in relationship with you. A God that wants to give you a hope and a future and a potential. Speak to those through the word of God. And get these lies and labels to go away. And then maybe you wonder, have wondered in here this morning and you've not yet begun a relationship with Jesus Christ. And maybe the lies of this world have would have kept you away from God. Maybe you thought you could find happiness in this world. Well, this world doesn't guarantee you happiness. This world's not going to guarantee you what Jesus is, something better than happiness, joy and peace. And when we stumble, we have a, serve a God who meets us with grace and forgiveness and mercy. And you have to have about this much faith to take a step towards that God and allow God to begin to change your life. Because it doesn't matter how many times you've messed up. It doesn't matter how imperfect you are. There's a God of heaven who wants to be in a relationship with you. You just mark that on your card. We won't do a thing in the world to embarrass you. But we will contact you and help you take your first steps toward following Jesus and getting the new life that he promised. And if you'd like to be baptized, we'd love to pull out our little hot tub, baptism tub that we have here. We'd love to pull that out and baptize you and welcome you into the family of God through your adoption ceremony, through baptism. We can explain all that as well. Now, each and every week, we uh, collect an offering, our tithes as part of our worship, that we give back a small portion of what our God has given us. Did y'all know God's a generous God? And our generous God loves generous givers. So thank you, all you who are generous and help us f fulfill our mission in this community. We thank you for your financial faithfulness. There are always four ways you can give. If you're our guest here this morning, don't feel obligated to give. This service was our gift to you. Just put your connection card in the bucket at the end of the service and that'll be fine. But thank you all so much. Um, we do have our fun team's little field day. is going to be right after second service, so we invite you to stay for that as well. And then each and every week, we always close by asking you a couple questions. And some of y'all might be bored with these questions. But I tell you what, we'll quit asking them when we're all doing them. How about that? Deal? Is that good? So here it is. Who are you investing in? There's somebody in your world who needs somebody to invest in them. Who are you including? Not just, you know, who are you inviting? To, not to church, just into your life. And who are you including in what God is doing in the world around you? You see, Sunday morning we gather as followers of Jesus Christ to be fortified, to be filled so we can go out into the world. What happens in here is if we get fortified and we get filled so we can go out the walls of the church and be the church to the world around us. So who are you investing in? Who are you inviting? Who are you including? Those three questions are... <laughs> when you can answer them with actual actions, I think you're well on your way to putting the kingdom of heaven first. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Satan is the father of lies. Which one do you want to follow? It's your choice. Always is. Your choice. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for sending your son to us to show us the way, the truth, and to give us this life here and forever. Father, help us see the truth that we're missing because we insist on telling ourselves lies. Help us to begin to be humble and honest about what's really going on inside, what's really going on behind all of that. And then, Lord, help us to heal. Help us become whole again so that we can serve you and represent you in the world. 
We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You're dismissed.